Today we're talking about water, something that I've heard is pretty key to the continuation of life. For goodness sakes, we found a little bit of it frozen on Mars and all of a sudden we're practically looking for footprints. For those of you regular viewers sighing with your head in your hand because oh God, Steven's doing another green policy episode. Well, this environmental policy has nothing to do with global warming, and everything to do with keeping pesticides and all their sorts of things with these suffix aside out of our drinking water. That's right, the Trump administration just announced new regulations for public water, and let me put it this way, now might be a good time to invest in Dasani. The new water rule announced on Thursday would, for the first time in decades, allow landowners and property developers to dump pollutants such as pesticides and fertilizers directly into hundreds of thousands of waterways, and to destroy or fill in wetlands for construction projects. So alright, that might sound so bleak that some of you are going to want to tune into the impeachment trial for a pick me up. Of course, President Trump didn't just sign executive order screw water for all downstream people. This was a nuanced regulatory change called the Navigable Waters Protection Rule. Now you might notice that step two in the name in parentheses right there. And that's because step one was rolling back the water protection rules for the interior of the country to be replaced with today's plan. On Thursday, this plan was explained by EPA Director Andrew Wheeler, and maybe the one place in the world to understand exactly how valuable clean water is, Las Vegas. Yes, let's pitch our water deregulation plans in the middle of the desert. When Congress established EPA's authority, it intended states to be partners in our efforts to protect the environment and public health. For example, the Clean Water Act lays out the process by which states can take charge of their own pollutant discharge elimination systems. EPA's recent approval of Idaho's program is a great example of EPA working cooperatively with states to provide them certainty with respect to water permitting. Exactly. This move is being described as a limiting of the federal government's regulatory power. As Director Wheeler later explained, it respects the limited powers that the executive branch has been given under the Constitution and the Clean Water Act to protect navigable waters. So from a policy angle, what does that mean? Well, in an incredibly unclarifying clarification, it limits federal regulation of water to four classes that I think require at least a minor in environmental science to understand. Basically, the new rule will retain federal protections for large bodies of water as well as larger rivers and streams that flow into them, and wetlands that lie adjacent to them. Anything else though, well that is now out of the Federales Bay Grade. This means a deregulation of many other waters including groundwater, uh oh, wetlands that are not adjacent to large bodies of water, some seasonal streams that flow only for a portion of the year, and ephemeral streams that only flow after rainstorms. Man, this really puts the EEP in EPA. I mean groundwater, woof. This means that, hey state legislators, get out your pens and start crafting your own water laws. Or don't. I'm just glad the water doesn't move between states, or else this would be a real mess. Of course, some are concerned about this policy change, with Patrick Pantoul, professor of environmental law at Vermont Law School saying, this is rolling back federal jurisdiction of the Clean Water Act further than it's ever been before. Waters that have been protected for almost 50 years will no longer be protected under the Clean Water Act. Now when I started researching this, I thought, because I'm a bit selfish, well, I get my water from navigable water sources, so I'm good. Thank god you can fit a boat on the Delaware River. This is more of an issue relevant to the Midwest. That is, until I read something. About 90% of the streams that supply the Colorado River run only after rainfall or snowmelt. Under the new Trump water rule, many of those streams will not qualify for federal pollution protection. 
Pollutants such as chemical pesticides that end up in those dry stream beds could nonetheless be swept up into larger bodies of water when the streams begin running after the spring thaw of mountain snow. Phew, I think I need a drink after reading that. Who knows, maybe whiskey will soon be a healthy alternative to water. It'll certainly be clearer. So this deregulation unfortunately does have a pretty direct effect over the laws governing waterways that feed into the major drinking water rivers. The other concern is, this could open up millions of acres of pristine wetlands to pollution or destruction, and allow chemicals and other pollutants to be discharged into smaller headland waters that eventually drain into larger water bodies. You know, unless states realize they can no longer rely on federal laws like the Clean Water Act and instead take the initiative to pass their own. So alright, now that I have half of my viewers running to the nearest tree for a hug, let's ask the other question. Who benefits from this? Well, Trump just did say this in a speech to the American Farm Bureau Federation. I terminated one of the most ridiculous regulations of all. The last administration's disastrous Waters of the United States rule. Yes, on the other side, you have farmers and people who like to dump crap into waterways. Who knows, maybe the New Jersey Mafia might like this. Yeah, let's keep the feds out of that swamp, specifically the far corner that's always in the shade. Farmers have long hated the Clean Water Act because it requires you to get a National Pollutant Discharge Elimination System permit to regulate runoff and dumping of pollutants into bodies of water. It limited the types and quantities of toxic chemicals that could end up in water sources. Hear me out though, wouldn't it be simpler if we just, you know, didn't do that? When it comes to the environment, I will always trust a farmer over a Washington bureaucrat or a left-wing extremist. Leaving the creation of laws and regulating process up to the states would enable more localized regulation from people who might better be able to address regional problems. So who? Just hey, states, let's not fall asleep at the wheel passing our own Clean Water Act, please. Specifically you guys, Delaware. Governor John Carney, New York City gets 90% of their water from your state's groundwater, so don't make Governor Cuomo go full mafia on you guys. As you can tell, the interstate nature of this issue makes deregulation particularly nerve wracking. This regulation is also going to be heralded as a major victory for fossil fuel producers and real estate developers. So there you have it, just another incredibly uplifting episode about environmental regulations. Thank you and that's all I have to say about that. Hey YouTube, first I'd like to thank my patrons for helping me put out my videos. If you want to support independent nonpartisan news looking into the, I don't know how, but this is falling under the overlooked category, join this growing list of exceptional individuals by clicking on the link in the description. Also, remember to subscribe because my New Year's resolution is to get to a thousand of you. And boy oh boy, I've been sitting at 902 for quite some time. Ring that bell so that freedom will continue to ring and give me a thumbs up if you like what you saw. Lastly, as always, thank you for watching.